what's up guys my family's playing music in the background once again so sorry if it's too loud but um we're gonna rank another discography i think i'm gonna keep doing these because this is lots of fun for me and i'm gonna keep going with it so today we're ranking one of the greatest underground rap collectives of all time cunning linguists um they consist of no deacon and natty at one point uh the group was a lot different uh, I'm not here to talk about the group though, I'm here to talk about how I'd rank their studio albums. So let's get into it. Number six, Will Rap for Food. Uh, I'd rank this one last. Um, there's nothing necessarily wrong with it, it's just for me. Uh, it's one of their weaker albums. I know it was their first album, just Deacon and No were in the group at the time. Uh, it was a more fun album than a serious driven one like most of their recent output, recent output as in 2006 forward, um, but it's a good album, there's still some personal cuts like Mike Like a Memory, and uh, I think I think the one track is called Family Business, but I could be wrong, it's family something, uh, but there's tracks that make it really fun like Thugged Out Since Cub Scouts and um, Ain't No Way, so it's just a really fun album overall. I would still give it a 7.5 out of 10. The production is great with every Conan Linguist album it is. So yeah, moving on. Number five, Southern Underground. Um, this is probably interchangeable with Will Rap for Food. Uh, they introduce a new member to the group, Mr. SOS. This is actually the only album that he's on. Um, he's featured in their Strange Journey albums. But uh, yeah, it, it's a solid album, just like Will Rap for Food. Um, I feel like out of all the albums, though, it's the least focused. Uh, there's no big theme. It's just a bunch of southern rappers making tracks. Once again, there's a couple personal tracks on here, like uh, Love Ain't. But the thing is, they're not like personal to the um, to the group members themselves, but rather they uh, tell deeper stories, I guess, like Falling Down, um, Rain, which actually is very personal with Mr. SOS detailing his relationship and being cheated on. So yeah, I would also give Southern Underground a 7.5 out of 10. Solid effort from the boys. And moving on to number four, Rose Zuraniano. They dropped it three years ago, 2017. Uh, it's still their most recent project. And when it dropped, I loved it. And I still do love it. I think... Uh, it is a good callback to the Dirty Acres period. Uh, it has a lot of the same themes as Dirty Acres. Uh, just uh, lots of themes regarding black music and women. And you can see that in the album cover that literally has a black woman on it. Um, and then um, also the colors red, blue, yellow, roses, zero, and yano. I believe those uh, mesh together to make black. So... There are some great uh, storytelling tracks on here, like uh, Mr. Morganfield. Um, Anyway, the Wind Blows is probably the best stor storytelling track on here. And even when the boys are still um, being serious, they're still having fun, like on Hustlers, which No has some pretty funny lines on there, but it's still a, a, a really interesting track. Um, I won't spoil anything for you if you decide to go check this out, but I'd give Rose Zuraniano an 8 out of 10. Moving on to number 3, Dirty Acres. This used to be my personal favorite album from these guys because of, I would say, it's their most personal, excuse me. Um, out of all the albums they have, this is the main one where they talk about their own struggle as opposed to the struggle of an entire group or the struggle of personified characters. It's literally them telling you about their lives and it gets so deep sometimes like on the song Georgia where Natty talks about his um, his dad moving on so quickly after his mother died and how sketchy it was and No talks about the relationship he had with his grandparents because Back to family business, he didn't really have a good relationship with his mother or father, if I remember correctly. Um, and he talks about the racism he's seen down south and how he's just absolutely disgusted by it. So Dirty Acres is an absolutely amazing project. Um, 
great themes, great production as always. And I'd give it a 9 out of 10. Moving on to number 2, One Urology. You're like, how can One Urology not be number 1? Because there's a better album than it. Anyway, One Urology is still absolutely mind-blowing. The album is completely about the concept of dreams. And it came out in 2011, and there's some fantastic features on it. Uh, Freddie Gibbs is on it, Big Crit's on it, Anna Wise from uh, Sunny Moon, and she was featured on Kendrick's Good Kid Mad City and To Pimp, to Pimp a Butterfly. So she's on there, I think twice. And all the features do their thing. Um, the production is unlike anything I've ever heard. When I first heard this album, I was just absolutely in shock, I guess. It literally takes you into this trance or this this spacey, dreamy area. The way the production matches with the themes of the album is absolutely amazing. There's a couple corny lines here and there, but it really doesn't matter because of how good everything else else is in the project. Um, yeah. Uh, I'd give One Neurology a 9.5 out of 10. A well-deserved 9.5 out of 10. And their number one album you already saw it coming a piece of strange this is a project that people can talk about for literally ever there's a reason there's an entire web page dedicated to this project and i'm not going to talk about uh the story of the album the themes of the album well i'll tell you the themes the themes surround um i guess temptation racism uh addiction even i would say it's so interesting how they were able to make a story about all those themes and still have it make sense and obviously everyone's going to have their own interpretation of it but man the live production on it everything's live i believe no did an absolutely amazing job putting everything together and it's it's a masterpiece i would argue that it's not only one of the greatest rap albums of all time but one of the greatest albums of all time period um i have nothing bad to say about it really the only thing i would say is if you're going to listen to this don't just listen to individual tracks from it you need to sit down and listen to the entire thing for it to make sense if you listen to it a few times and still don't get it go to the web page i mentioned earlier and do your own research about it because once you understand the story you will be literally mind blown and of course i'm gonna give a piece of strange a 10 out of 10 so yeah oh by the way since uh i'm not ranking the strange journey mixtapes in this uh list i'm just gonna rank them real quick right now the best one is three second best one is one and the worst one is strange journey volume two so I'll be back tomorrow with another discography ranking. Don't know who's I'm going to do yet, but I'll catch you then. See you later, guys.